find my way back to you Till you make amends with the demons you've been through And I can't regret leaving you alone Until you find your way back home What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So today I got a lot going on and I'm gonna go ahead and give you a link right here to all the tips because there's gonna be multiple tips today. Multiple. By the way, you ever like go outside to do your lawn work for the day and realized you're kind of dressed like the crocodile hunter? Anyway, the first thing we're gonna do today though is we're gonna take a trip down to the Home Depot and we're gonna do that because I actually ended up scalping this lawn a little bit last week. And uh, it's really stunted it, so I need to go ahead and uh, throw her down like way too much fur to stimulate more growth here and just start pushing this back green. Because as you know, I still have a Dominate Your Neighbors 2 video to make. I just haven't gotten to it yet because I've had so much going on here around the homestead, including all this landscaping. I don't know if you can tell, but the house is a different color now. It's a little bit lighter yellow than what it was. And I also got these pretty areca palms that I got to plant today. Anyway, the primary tip that I'm gonna be giving you today and trust me, it's probably a little bit more than just the tip, is gonna be how to get ready for your fall lawn care. And this will be for those of you with cool season grasses. So this is not gonna be for you Southern folks. We got something for you a little later. Remember, our fall comes much later. But for you cool season grass friends, I'm gonna go ahead and give you all the tips that I need to give you to get ready because you're gonna to wanna to start sometime in September, depending on what the weather looks like where you live. I do kind of find it kind of funny though. I was looking around the other day and I see a lot of people post it on Facebook like, oh, summer's coming to an end. Oh, it's starting to get cool again. <laughs> I'm like, dude, in Florida, we are just getting started. In fact, uh, this is about the last time that I'm gonna have any dryness on my shirt. Once I've been out here for more than about five minutes, I'm completely soaked. And by the way, I love it. I love it. So I am gonna be giving you guys a full review of this bad dog. Um, jury's still out on it for me because it didn't come with a mulch kit, so I had to order a mulch kit for it. And I'm hoping that the mulch kit will change the cutting height in some way, shape, or fashion. Because I don't do too well with this side discharge garbage over by here. I don't need this side discharge. I need to mulch. I need to mulch the St. Og. And then I would love to show you what is attached to this tire right here, but I can't. Hey, real quick, so I wanna address with you guys, because I owe it to you, I wanna address with you the fact that I've been putting out this sponsored content that some of you guys don't like. That when you're doing content for a brand and you have a brand deal that you're working on and lawyers get involved, it stifles and destroys creativity. And what you end up with are things that are very corporate because things that are corporate are safe and that's why corporations like corporate things. Now I try to work in some of my own humor into the videos and I hope that some of you get it, I know that some of you do, but at the end of the day, I really do like the tools and if I say something about the tool that I like, I'm being very honest with you because I actually do. When I showed you that string trimmer that I use and I'll link below to it, to edge here, which I haven't done yet today, I really mean it, I actually like it. It works great, it's easy, it's quick. Bing, bang, boom, I'm done, and I don't have to worry about nicking up my pavers. Now, I know that the music was a little bit dramatic and all that, but again, I was just trying to be like overly sappy because I thought it was kind of funny. I mean, after all, I am the lawn care nut, and if somebody's gonna fall in love with an adjustable shaft trimmer unit, it's gonna be me. So anyway, there's gonna be like four more of those coming out that are kind of similar to that, and I hope you'll just watch them just because you'll get an overview of what those tools are. And I hope that if you're someone that's shopping for battery-powered lawn tools, that you'll look at them and, and maybe they'll help to influence your decision in some way. After all, that's what advertising is. And that's why I disclose it right up front. And so that brings us back to this tire here and why I can't show you what's attached to it. I wish I could because so far I have 
really enjoyed the use of what's attached to this tire. I don't want to put too much emotion into it. Anyway, you guys will see this soon. Sometimes you have to explore nuclear options. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, thanks. You're Man, welcome. you want your lawn real green? You gotta use Malorganite, bro. What's that? You gotta use Malorganite if you want your lawn really green. Oh, that's better? Oh, yeah, man. For green, but that's got fertilizer. Oh, that is too, though. Okay. Man, that's, you know what that is? No. That's organic nitrogen from Milwaukee Sewage District. Yeah. It's poop. To dry it out. Sounds good. Channel. I, I need to listen to the pro. I, I need to listen to the pro. Oh, okay. Oh, the lawn care nut. Oh, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, this has got a hole in it. <laughs> yeah, this stuff right here, man, it'll green you up. It's got, uh, it's got nitrogen in it, mm -hmm. and it's also got iron. So the iron is what turns your lawn blue. Ah. So, so you, you grass must be nice and tough, nice and puffy. Oh, yeah. Well, I've seen Augustine, so. Oh, okay. It's That's beautiful right. grass. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. That's good. Well, you got to put more of this down, like, uh, so that synthetic you were there, you're going to probably put that down at three pounds per thousand, mm -hmm. because it's a 16 in the front, so that'll give you, actually, you can put this down. What you do is you multiply, the first number mm -hmm. is your in rate, so you multiply this by the pounds on the ground. So if you put down, say, five pounds per 1,000 square feet, mm -hmm. that's going to give you 0 .70, three quarter pound in. Oh, okay. Which is about right. How big yeah. is your lawn? Uh... The front is about 30 by 20, and the back is about 30 by 60. So 30 by 20 is what, 600 square 600 feet? 600 So you have a small front yard. Yeah. yeah so you need that. like a half a bag of this on the front. That's okay. It. Not any more than that. Mm -hmm. And then your back, you said, is 30 by? About 30 by 60. So that's 1,800, yeah. one full bag one in the back. One full bag of so bag Oh, yeah, that would be more bag. than enough. You'd be real good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I got man. it. <laughs> good luck. Sometimes it's nice to be helpful when you're at the home depot. In case you're wondering, I'm still a gas man. There's what you call overkill, son.
now we're at the point where we're ready to put these bad boys in the ground. Now, a lot of you might ask, do you need soil amendments here? And the answer is no, everything's fine. Palms don't need soil amendments. There's already plenty of fertilizer inside this pot that's gonna fall down in. I might put a little Epsom salt around uh, in the fall time, but for right now, they don't need anything but water every single day. By the way, what's funny is we're inland enough that in this neighborhood, we actually have clay soil. Now it's got some sand component to it, a lot more than you guys do up north. But we actually do have sand. Now we have a good amount of topsoil here, so the clay's a little bit further down, but people complain about it here. I'm like, man, you guys have no idea. This is better for drainage. It's not real good for palm trees though. We don't want them to sit in wet feet, but uh, it's good for the lawns actually. I think it uh, means less water than like when I was in St. Petersburg where we had sugary sand that wouldn't hold water at all. At least this stuff holds moisture nicely, I think. All right, now here's how I do plantings when I've got to put a bunch in a row and I need the spacing to be the same, but they're irregular. These are very irregular, right? So you gotta have some room to play. Here's what I do. And the first thing I do is, is I plant the ends first because the ends are what most people are gonna see, right? So I plant the two ends, I put them in the ground, I get them set and I get them set up like I like and then I adjust everything else off of those two ends. So you can see it's not gonna be hard. That hole's not done yet, but it's not gonna be hard to put this in and get it in perfect where I want it, right? And then the same down here at this end, it won't be hard to get this one in and get this one in perfect. Then as I put these other ones in, again, I play off of these, and I'm gonna use measurements, but I'm also gonna use eyeballing all the way down. So we are having one of our regular Florida rainstorms that we have. So I've had to come in and I don't know if this is going to totally jack up the rest of my day because I don't want to go digging in the mud, but I was going to do some lawn tips anyway, some fall lawn tips for you guys. So I figure while I'm sitting here all dirty, sweating out in the garage, by the way, do you like this setup right here? Got me some coffee. It's always nice to have a little black coffee in the afternoon. I don't know if you guys like this setup or not, but I'm gonna turn this into something else, I think. Um, have some have some cigars out here, maybe. Some beers, a couple of two tree beers in a garage. I don't know, I just kind of found this area here by the water heater. And uh, I don't know, I'll make something out of it. Also, it's got nice, I happen to see the stray bug anywhere around. I can zap them. Zap them. Not a sponsor. Oh, there you go. Oh. That was more than just a tip. And it's always a good idea to spray some chemical and then have a severe coffee. All right, so the first thing is, guys, just forget about spraying weeds right now. I know I did a weed control video a couple weeks back. Again, that was for those of you that have a little breakthrough, that have been on your lawn, you've been working on them, you know, that kind of thing. And some of you did have some questions about heat restrictions, and for sure, oh, by the way, that's another thing, uh, the air conditioning unit's up there, so that's gonna add a nice little background noise element to the videos. You always have to read the label on the product that you're spraying, just to see what the heat restrictions are. And sometimes, like in my case, I'm willing to get um, some dieback and spray in the heat because I just don't want the weeds to take over any worse than they already have. All right, so anyway, those of you with cool season lawns, typically the first week of September is gonna be perfect for you. If you're in Kentucky, Northern Kentucky, you may wanna wait till mid or later September, but if you're definitely up in Illinois or even up the Eastern seaboard, up over towards, uh, you know, New York, up in there, um, Pennsylvania around that way, and then anything um, out into the plains, you can start first week of September. Typically what you wanna go through, because we're gonna be doing seeding here, is you just wanna make sure that temperatures are not gonna exceed 85 degrees really uh, for long periods of time, and you definitely don't want them to go any lower than 40 degrees for more than a couple hours. So that brings us to our first consideration, which is weather windows. You need to make sure that you have enough time after you plant for that seed to germinate, grow, and harden off so that it can handle the winter to come. So typically you guys are gonna be planting 
perennial rye, Kentucky bluegrass really is going to be your primary. You might put some, some tall fescue in there, but really most of you are going to be planting rye and Kentucky blue. I personally recommend if you can get started earlier, like in early September, to get a blend that's 75% KY blue or more and 25% of whatever else. Keep in mind though that that blend is going to be more expensive. Kentucky bluegrass is much more expensive than perennial rye. So if you go and get a sunny seed that's cheaper, it doesn't mean it's not a good quality. It probably just means it's got more rye or maybe more fescue than it does Kentucky blue. Either way, keep in mind that Kentucky bluegrass germinates at 21 days. And when I say that, that means 22, 23, 24 till you actually see the grass actually starting to grow. Keeping that in mind, that means then that you're going to need a good, I would say, three or four weeks after that before you have any kind of a freeze or any kind of a major dip below 40 to make sure that it has time to harden off. So if you do that, so if you have 24 days, right, as your initial, that's four weeks, and then I said another four weeks after that, you need eight. So if you start the first week of September, then your perfect window takes you all the way to the last week of October. So think about that, keep that in mind where you live, and if you can keep those temperature ranges for that eight week period, then you're probably good. If you can't, then you probably wanna go with a mix that does have a little bit more perennial rye in it, because perennial rye will germinate, I think, like a week or so. So that pretty much shortens up that entire window by three to four weeks. So with that, yes, we are gonna seed, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna aerate first. Now, if you don't need to seed, if your lawn is super thick and healthy, like mine always was up in Indiana, then just aerate. If you have clay soil, aeration is really the best practice to keep that soil from being too compacted. I know a lot of people want to sell you all kinds of like liquid um, soil softeners and conditioners and all that. Look, don't do that. Just aerate your lawn every fall if it's really bad. I used to aerate mine every other fall because I was fine, but use organics. If you use organic fertilizers and organic amendments in your lawn, that's going to keep everything soft. That's going to keep everything malleable. That's going to keep everything aerated naturally. I used to have so many earthworms in my lawn that when we would get heavy rains, they would be caked across my driveway. I don't have any video of it, but they would be caked across there. Why? Because my soil was super soft. I, I didn't have any compaction. All my neighbors, they're compacted and dry. You can see them, but mine was always nice. Why? Because I just used organics from the jump and I overused them. I mean, I put down the Milo every four to five weeks, but I'm telling you that's good for your soil. Makes sure you have to mow a lot though. So with that, that wasn't meant to be a little rant there. So with that, again, I want you to aerate. Now listen, this is not an easy thing. You need to start calling around now, figure out where you can rent the aerator. Remember, this is a very large machine. You're not gonna be able to put it into your Hyundai like I would wanna do. You're gonna need a truck, so maybe you gotta rent a U-Haul. Maybe you gotta rent a truck from, you know, wherever. Do it with your buddies. Also, you can't lift the machine by yourself, so you're not gonna be able to get it in and out of the truck alone. You're gonna need help with that, but two people can handle it. I have a video that I'll link to below that shows you exactly how to use an aerator. They're all a little bit different, but similar enough that you can figure it out. So the first thing you're gonna do is aerate. And again, first week of September. If you haven't had rain and the lawn is still hard and compacted, then just give your lawn a good deep soaking two days before for two days in a row, just to go ahead and soften everything up. You wanna make sure you pull a core that's at least as big as your thumb, a uh, couple inches long. You wanna get down a couple inches deep, but if you can get cores that are three or even four inches long, that's what you want. And again, core aerator. None of these spikes or any of that kind of stuff. I also recommend that while you're out there that you do a double pass aeration. Go ahead and poke double the holes. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to increase the activity and it's going to increase all that furt getting down in there that we're going to throw down in just a minute. All right, now the next thing you're going to do is you are definitely going to overseed. Again, that's for those of you that have an overly thin lawn. Maybe you got hit with disease this year. Maybe some insects got you. Maybe you just have what I talk, call an old school lawn which are old neighborhoods like in Chicago and that where that lawn's been there for 30, 40, 50 years. Who knows what it's been exposed to? Who knows what old grass cultivars are in there? You need to get some fresh stuff, some stuff that's more disease resistant, more drought resistant, just better science. That's the kind of stuff you want. So you definitely want to overseed if you have an old school lawn. Again, if you have super area, if you have other areas that are super thin, I recommend you use a little Scott's Patch Master to cover over, put down a little extra seed, put that little Patch Master over top there. That's just gonna help to keep you tucked in and help those super thin areas get a little bit thicker, a little bit quicker. Now I always say seed is cheap, throw her down. And when I say it's cheap, a lot of you guys go and you're like, dude, like it's like five, six, seven dollars a pound. And that's true. But when you compare it to sod, it is. I mean, guys, to do a 5,000 square foot lawn sod job, like five grand. To do it in seed, less than 500. So that's what I mean when I say seed is cheap, throw her down. Now I do recommend when you're doing an overseed, do five pounds per thousand. You could get away with two or three, but do five pounds per thousand. Do seven or eight if you want. Again, seed is cheap, throw her down, put it in your spreader, put it across evenly and get it done. Next thing you're gonna do is you've aerated, 
you've put down the grass seed. Now I want you to go ahead and throw down some starter fur. Just get anything at the store labeled for starter fur. Some of you will be able to get it with FOSS and some of you won't, it just depends where you live. Go ahead and put your starter fur down regardless of what you get. Put it down at three pounds per thousand, that's it. I know that that's a big variance, but just put the starter fur down at three pounds per thousand. Now, if you know what you're doing and you know how to, to do these things, try to get something that's gonna give you at least 0.75 pound N, P, and K, if that's what you can get. But again, I don't know what you're gonna be able to find. At the minimum though, get 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So get a half a pound of each at the very minimum. Again, if you don't know what you're doing, three pounds per thousand square feet, you'll be fine on the starter fur. Next, I want you to go ahead and get your melorganite. Put your melorganite down at five pounds per thousand. That's gonna give us an additional quarter pound in, but it's also gonna give us some nice organics that are gonna get down there into those holes, get down into that soil to help loosen that soil up, to help increase that soil activity down in there. That's really what the melorganite is for. Give us a little iron boost, that's great. Give us a little in boost, that's great. But really what we want the melorganite for is just to get some of that organic directly down into the soil immediately. From here, I want you to water every day. The hope is that you'll be getting some rain help again, but if, if not, you definitely want to water every day. At least in the morning, give the lawn a good soaking. That's for that seed. We're not really covering it up or anything, so you know a good majority of it's not gonna germinate. But if you can water twice a day, then definitely do that morning and evening, or morning and afternoon actually is where you wanna be, just again to keep that seed as wet as possible. And hopefully, you know, we've got cooler temperatures now, the sun's not beating so hard. I mean, that's gonna help as well. As far as mowing goes, just mow like normal. I mean, if you see areas of your lawn that the grass is coming up in right after a few weeks, I mean, don't trample them. You know, keep the foot traffic low, but you gotta mow, so just go. Um, you know, enjoy your mow, just be careful with it. Definitely mulch your clippings during this time. Anything that you mulch is just gonna fall back in and just to help to keep everything tucked in real nice. So you definitely wanna be mulching this time. And from there, I recommend you put down another full dose of malorganite, so that's gonna be 15 pounds per thousand. I want you to put that down a full six weeks after this aeration overseed. And so that's gonna put you right around, if you do this the first, second week of September, that's actually gonna put you that couple weeks before Halloween, which I've talked to you guys about is important because Halloween trick or treat day is a domination point. It's a point for everybody to see your domination. So that's another thing that you consider with this kind of fall application treatments here is getting started in time so that you're good to dominate for Halloween. So some of you would ask, what if I need a complete rehab? And I'm gonna tell you right now, if your lawn is 20% grass, then this will work for you. The only difference is, is dialing your seed up or back. You know, if you only have 20% grass right now or 20% turf, then put down 10 pounds per thousand when you do your seeding. If you have pretty thick turf or pretty healthy turf, then put down that five pounds or four pounds per thousand, somewhere in there. Other than that, this is for rehabbers and this is also for those of you with nice, healthy, thick lawns. Again, the only thing you have to dial up or back is the amount of seed. Definitely aerate, keep the starter for it, and definitely keep the mile out. All right, now back from the rain out. It's not quite as muddy as I thought it would be, which is great. So we got that one in the ground there, right there. And we got this one in the ground here. Now I can measure between and get all these other ones in. Nice and even, make sure everything looks good. All right, so we got 18 feet. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven gaps in between. Okay, Google. What is 18 divided by seven? So a little over two and a half feet in between each one should give us a nice even starting point. That's two and a half feet each one. And again, this is rough layout. We're gonna put them in the ground for real.
All right, so here is the finished product. I don't know if you can see those going all the way down there. This is what it looks like. I need some water. This is the next day, by the way. I need to get some water in them because it's hot already. But there they are, all nice and sweet in a row. Got some irrigation there that I need to uh, adjust in here, but I'm gonna have to water by hand until then. Now some of you might be wondering what I'm gonna use in here, why not rock? What I'm actually gonna use is grass clippings um, because what happens is even when I mulch, I always end up with quite a few grass clippings left over on the driveway that I have to rake up and I have nowhere to put them. That always happens when I film. Anyway, and I'm gonna put the grass clippings in here and I'm gonna use that natural mulch and grass clippings will keep everything nice and even in here, it'll keep all the weeds and stuff out. It works surprisingly well and it's just a good way for me to get rid of the grass clippings and to use them for something healthy instead of, you know, putting them in the bin and then having the, you know, garbage people take them away or whatever. Sure is a good thing I had this aqua thumb handy. <laughs> 